I've got this old rather knackered lampshade that's seen better days. So I'm going to see if I can apply them and make a lampshade out of them because I think it'll look rather pretty with the light shining through. So if that works out, that will be my next video. So I hope you join me for that. This lampshade has definitely seen better days. It's quite dirty and the fabric's coming away a bit at the top. So I gave it a good clean just with a cloth with a little bit of water in. And mostly it was dust, but there were a few stains on it as well. So I had to think what to do about that. And I gave the inside a good clean as well. So because the fabric had been coming away from the ring at the top, I decided to glue it back. It was a little bit awkward to get into that gap. I had to do it though because it just looked, it just didn't look very good if I didn't do that. So I got some YooHoo glue, which is a little bit difficult to use because it tends to squeeze out a bit too quickly from the nozzle. But actually the nozzle was quite good for getting into that small space. So I just put a sort of channel of it next to where I wanted it. After a couple of minutes I wanted to make sure it's really sticking so I just sort of used my hand as a clamp. If you're trying to stick things that don't really want to be glued together it's quite a good idea to put the glue on first and then wait a couple of minutes for the glue to just kind of dry down a bit. It loses some of its viscosity and gets a little bit stickier so it makes it easier for the two sides to adhere. And there were one or two bits where the fabric had actually torn and I cut off a little bit here because I didn't think I'd be able to get it all down. So now it comes to the fun part, the decoration. So I've got lots of these prints that you might have seen in my last video. And I thought, I did think about keeping them as they were, but I didn't really like the effect. So I thought it would look prettier to actually have them cut out. It's a little bit fiddly to do, um, but you just need to take your time, use a small sharp pair of scissors. And what I find is, makes it easier is to go round doing the rough sort of shape of it first and then you can go back and do some of the details afterwards. For some of them I decided to do a little bit more detail and actually cut out the hole that was within the leaf because that was what had drawn me to these in the first place because they were these lovely sort of skeletal um, kind of slightly broken down leaves that I think make such a pretty print. So this is where I decided to cut out a bit within the leaf. You just have to pierce it very gently with the tip of your scissors and then you can cut round. So because the lampshade had these stains, I made the decision to paint it. And in retrospect, um, I'm not sure I would do that again because it did cause a few problems. What I didn't realise was that although I thought I was putting on the paint very evenly, I was using an acrylic mixed with some fabric medium. It actually did leave some streaks and I could only see this when I held it up to the light or to another lamp that I put inside it. And when I was looking online for tips with this, the best tip I saw, which came a bit too late for me, was that right from the beginning, if you want to paint a lampshade, you should actually have it on a stand with the bulb and the light on, and then you can see as you're working um, exactly how streaky it's getting. Because you can't really tell, the paint is opaque until you actually shine a light right next to it. Now I'm putting some gesso on it, um, because I thought that would give a more opaque look to the lamp and it would cover over the streaks that I had already done. So I did a couple of coats of this. Um, still, still wasn't enough, still could see some gaps. So what I decided to use in the end was some chalk paint that luckily I had already. And it's pretty amazing stuff, chalk paint, because you can paint it on anything. You don't need to give much prep and it will go on fabric as well as furniture and walls. And even then I did need a couple of coats of that. So all in all, I think I did about six coats. So maybe in retrospect, 
it wasn't a good idea, although I don't know how I would have covered the little marks on it. I'd have to have decided to put my motifs actually over the stains. And I suppose at the beginning I didn't really want to do that because that wasn't the pattern that I wanted. That's why I went down this route. Anyway, I learned a lot and I hope that's given you a few tips if you ever decide to do it. And then I just put a little bit of paint on the top as well. It was slightly changing the colour. It was a sort of darker cream and now it's um, just an off-white, but I wanted to make sure it was really even. And what I'm doing now is I'm, I've cut out several of the leaves and I'm trying to work out what placement I want. And I thought the easiest way for this was to get some blue tack. I think it's actually the white sort and um, attach it and then I could then I could get an idea of how it looked. It's always good when you're doing a design to be able to stand away from it and if I was just holding it on with my hand it would be quite hard to see the overall effect. So I decided in the end that I wanted to put them pretty much at the same height and I worked out that six would fit on it with a nice bit of space around each one. So my next job was to measure on the lampshade itself so that I could get it roughly in the right place. I didn't worry about millimetre accuracy. I just wanted to make sure there was an even sort of gap between each leaf and also that the tip of each one started at about the same height. Now I'm measuring the circumference of roughly where I want the height to be and because I was putting six leaves, I had to divide it by seven so they'd have an even gap between them. This is the design that I decided on. And now I just had to take off the tack. And I was using spray adhesive. It's a nice fine one, this. I'll put the details down below. And it's good because it made it tacky but not too wet. If I'd used something like PVA or um, matte medium, which I use a lot, I think it would have made too much moisture. And as it was, this um, stuck well to the fabric. And there were one or two little bits around the edge that did need a little bit of tidying up afterwards. But um, it, was, it was a good way of doing it. And I was careful to really smooth the leaf on because I didn't want to get any air bubbles or any creases. I wanted to try and get a really good professional finish on it. You also have to be mindful to try and keep your hands clean because you don't want to get any smudges on the shade. And I put it on this stand as a temporary measure. This isn't the one I was going to use, but it made it much easier to see what I was doing. the gluing and waited for it to dry I did put a coat of matte medium on the whole lamp because the chalk paint needs something to protect it and I thought it would help the paper to be protected as well. I hadn't planned for this but I actually think it goes really well with this lamp base that just had a small very plain shade on it. It's got um, flowers and a couple of leaves on it. So I've put it in our houseplant corner next to my cabinet of curiosities and I'm actually really pleased with how it looks there. It even ties in with the colours in the painting above the cabinet. So I hope you enjoyed watching me upcycle this lamp. I'll definitely recommend it just with that proviso of put a bulb inside when you're painting it as that will really help you get a nice even finish.